Hello and welcome back to an academy. So let's get neat PG myself, Dr. Muskan Chaudhary, and we will cover out. Uh, we'll cover some bacteria uh, that we are left with, and uh, we'll do the rapid revision for them. Without going much into details, the important highlight reports that are being asked uh, repeatedly during the Central Institute examination. So starting with an academy, an academy is India's largest learning platform where you can assess both the live and the recorded sessions anytime and in everywhere. Learning from the India's topmost educators and you can personalize your learning experience with your favorite educator because you will get the notification for the same. Compete in the live T and Ds and test your preparation with a highly competitive quizzes. Study on the device of your choice anywhere, everywhere, and assess up to twenty-five thousand of the MCQs, around fifty to hundred MCQs per day. Printed and digital notes are being provided. Under Icon Subscriptions, Prepladder has come together with the An Academy, where you get clinical integrated essentials with video lectures, Q bands, rapid revision notes, and the dream notes. With the live batches, recorded classes, and Q banks of around twenty-five thousand MCQs, with live T and Ds and the digital notes. For twenty-four months, it is accounting for fifteen hundred per month. That is around thirty-six thousand. Thirty-six thousand for two years, and for three years, it is around one to uh, one to five zero per month. For Icon subscriptions, it will around fifty eight five hundred. That is accounting for around two four three eight per month. All right, and there is a Diwali offer that on uh, with twenty four month subscriptions you will get four month totally free. With twelve month subscriptions you get two month totally free, and with six month subscription you get one month totally free. All right, raise a hand feature where you can personalize your interactive classes. Educators can drive the engagement uh, with uh, with the learners and can engage into one on one discussions with their learners. Twenty five thousand MCQs based on high yield topics on the latest examination patterns, including the detailed explanations. Use my code that is Muskan ten to get ten percent of the. Discount. Interactive live classes. You can attend the live class, participate in the live chat, and get the doubts clear. Respond to polls for a better understanding and raise a hand feature. You can never miss a class because you will get the notification for the same. Be it on the An Academy Educators app or be it on the An Academy YouTube channel. Okay, so where will we uh, attend the lecture notes? Download the lecture notes, and that too anytime and everywhere. You can attend the live classes, participate in the live chat, and get our doubts clear. Now with twenty-four month subscriptions, four month is totally free, and with twelve month subscriptions, two month is totally free. With six month subscriptions, you will get one month totally free, and this is the Diwali offer. So please do not miss it. So we'll start with the first uh, first bacteria. We'll start with the first coccus. That is what we we'll first start with the we've already done the staph streptococcus, the gram positive coccus. We've already done. Now we'll come to the gram negative coccus. That is that is the basic difference. and very important one that is meningococcus and pneumococcus now we remember that meningococcus they are what they are capsulated they are what capsulated and they are what non capsulated plus they are what they are lens shape or half moon shaped all right and how they are they are what kidney shaped all 
Alright, M say M that is they are what moon shaped or lens shaped and therefore they are what they are utilizing utilizing the glucose as well as mannitol fermentation. Here only G that is what glucose metabolism. Now they are both extra as well as intracellular while they are mainly what they are mainly intracellular. Now what are the points that are directly asked in the examinations that are directly asked in the examination that first very important is that Manigococcus, they are capsulated, and what is the shape? That is the half moon or the lens shape. M and G both are what utilize that is the mannitol fermentation as well as glucose metabolism. This is actually M4 maltose utilization so both maltose and glucose and they are mainly glucococcus are mainly intracellular and how is the shape that is what kidney shape now moving to the individual individual gram negative focus that is the meningococcus and if you remember, if you remember, M and T is the exception for the coach postulate. Okay, that is M stands for mycobacterium lapri, N stands for Neisseria, and T stands for trypanoma pallidum. That is M and T. Now talking about the meningococcus, we've already seen that they are what they are capsulated. And on the basis of the capsular antigen, they are further of 13 serotypes. They are for, further of the 13 serotypes and the most infective one is A, B and C. A, B and C is the most infective. And what are the violence factor? Violence factor easy one is the capsule itself because they are capsulated. Next violence factor is what IgA1 protease. Another very important one that is lipo oligosaccharide. Lipo oligosaccharide. Okay, so they are capsulated and Ig protease lipopolysaccharide. Plus they are gram negative, so they are having what outer membrane, outer membrane protein and villi. Okay. So, please remember very important capsule, IgA protease, lipopolysaccharide and plus they are gram negative and gram negative has the outer membrane and outer membrane has the outer membrane protein that is what again the violence factor. Spread is by droplet infection. Lungs are involved causing what? Hematogenous. Hematogenous root spread. And reaching up to what? Meninges. Causing what? Meningitis. Along with the fever. Vomiting and headache. And headache. Along with the very important that is rash. Now, uh, what is the complications? Complication of meningococcus that is M. coltakia, that is W, that is what? Water house. Fredrickson syndrome. And this is what this is bilateral adrenal gland hemorrhage.
all right so they cause what the meningitis and the rash and the involve and the complication is what water house fredrickson syndrome water house fredrickson syndrome now for the lab diagnosis of the meningococcus very easy first we'll do the csf examination because if involvement of the meningitis csf examination and we'll take approximately three samples why one sample for the microscopy to see for the gram negative cocus that are what capsulated and the morphological appearance another for the pathology and another one for the biochemistry to to see for what proteins and the sugars because they actually they are utilizing what both maltose as well as the glucose now another is that we can do the culture and what uh, what is the culture that we need to remember what is on the uh, selective media that is what thyer martin media both for the gonococcus and the meningococcus that is a thyer martin media and on the gram stain how they will appear pink colored cocus because gram positive appeared purple and gram negative that is a pink colored cocus that is arranged both extra as well as intracellular that is arranged both extra as well as intracellular complications we have already seen that is the water house fredrickson syndrome which is nothing but bilateral adrenal gland hemorrhage so very important that is we need to remember the media the media that is a thyer martin is the selective media iske along we also have the modified thyer martin media and the new york's media but we need to remember the thyer martin media which is muller's hilton agar along with the 5% of the sheep blood that is a chocolate agar okay so what is a thyer martin media it is muller's hilton agar with the chocolate agar and we take the csf for the examination under microscopy cytological examination and the biochemistry examination if you remember if we had the c5 to c9 complement deficiency that is what late complement factors deficiency the chances of the toxoplasma and the neisseria infections were very high in the person that is again important question that early uh, late complement factors deficiency leads to what neisseria and the toxoplasma now talking about the vaccine of the meningococcus vaccine of the meningococcus it is what a meningococcal conjugate vaccine yep it is actually a meningococcal conjugate vaccine that is active against the serotypes and we need to remember that a uh, group a meningococcal vaccine is given to all the age and there is no that group b is poorly immunogenic cap or is conjugate vaccine because uh, the group b the group b is poorly immunogenic therefore there is no vaccine available all right and the meningococcal conjugate vaccine that is mainly we use the group a and the group a is given against is active against all the other groups and it is given to all the age group uh, and group b is no vaccine is available because they are poorly antigenic they have the poorly antigenic capsule therefore they are poorly immunogenic and there is no vaccine available for them <clears throat> now coming to the treatment coming to the treatment what is the drug of the choice what is the drug of the choice for the person who is infective it is what third generation cephalosporin and for the carriers 
is ciprofloxacin and rifampicin. So remember the drug of the choice for the carrier ciprofloxacin and third generation cephalosporin. Third generation cephalosporin. Now we'll come to the gonococci. Now on in them the pili base typing is done because pili is the main valence factor for the gonococcus and we already saw that the shape is what kidney shape and they are what they are non-capsulated they are non-capsulated and mainly intracellular. Incubation period is about 2 to 7 days and the violence factor IgA protease lipopolysaccharide outer because they are also what? Gram negative outer membrane protein and what else they also have the transferrin and lectoferrin. The disease that are caused by them. What is the most common presentation in the male? Is what? Urethritis. And in case of the female, it is what? Cervicitis. Urethritis and the cervicitis. In the newborn, it causes what? Ophthalmia. Neonatra. Now, ophthalmia and neonatra is mainly caused by the chlamydia, but if the question is saying that within seven days of the delivery, then it is what? It is what? It is causing by the gonococcus, and after seven days, it is ophthalmia neonatra. For the lab diagnosis, we take the swab. That is in the male, we take the urethral swab. And in case of the female, we take the endo cervical swabs. Hypogenous swabs are not taken because they already have the normal flora, so it can actually hamper the R. Uh, this interpretation of the results. So we take in the case of the males, we take the urethral swab, and in case of the female, we take the endocervical swab. And in case of the neonates, that is what we are taking what eye swabs. And we do the culture on the same media. That is Thayer Martin media, modified Thayer Martin media, or New York media. So, what we need to remember here that most common presentation in the male is what urethritis, in the female is in cervicitis, neonates in the ophthalmia neonatrum, urethral swab take, we take endocervical swab, eye swab, and the Thayer Martin media is the selective media. Now, on the gram staining, we already know how they will appear because they are gram negative. That is, gram, on the gram staining, they will appear what? Pink colored. Pink colored cocos. Alright, that is arranged mainly what? Intracellular. Complications, when we talk about the complications, that is complication, that is the water can perineum. Mainly occurring where in the maze because of the urethritis, that is a water can perineum. Another very important G4G, that is, we talked about Fitz Hug Curtis syndrome. <clears throat> that is what? That is what? Perihepatitis. And we see the volume strings between the between the capsule of the uh, capsule of the liver and the perioral space that is B for the volume strings. 
All right, and what is it? It is perihepatital at a fixed Hock Curtis syndrome. Apart from this, it also causes the polyarthritis and deep gonococcal infection, which is nothing but polyarthritis, which is uh, after the septicemia, a lot of sepsis of the, and the bacteria, the patient present with polyarthritis, which is a deep gonococcal infection. That means the infection has reached up to the bone. Now, they are, what, is the, what are the points that we need to remember from here that we know, already know the gram staining how do they will appear. One is the water can perineum and the fitz curtis syndrome that is what perihepatitis and deep gonococcal infection. Treatment is same that will for the cases will give the third Generation cephalosporin. All right, and for the areas will you give out? <laughs> Eprofloxacin. Now we'll come to the next bacteria. We have already uh, this uh, in detail. We have talked about it in the rapid division. We'll cover that. That is a mycobacterium. Okay. So they are what they are acid fast, acid fast basically, and it is due to what it is due to the presence of the mycolic acid in the cell wall. Therefore, they will resist what they will resist the decolorization decolorization all right and how they will appear how they will appear on the zn stain therefore they will appear against the blue background pink purple pink purple bacteria so how does they appear against the blue background they will appear pink purple <coughs> talking about the virulence factors They are having one is the code factor and another one is what lipoarabinomenon. All right, when we talk about the children, when we talk about the children, in the children, lower lobes are involved and the patient will present with Crohn's complex, which is what? Which is the Crohn's focus with lymph adenopathy and what is the next complex that is what rankase complex which is what calcified calcified hilar lymph adenopathy so one is that they are acid fast because they have mycolic acid in the cell wall therefore under the z stain they will appear blue background with pinkish purple bacilli violence factors food factor and the lipoarabinomenon lower lobes are involved in the children and it is the gons complex and the rankase complex in the post primary tb that we see mainly in the others that is the up Upper lobe is involved, and the focus that is two focus in the post primary TB. That one is what one is what Salmon's focus and S men's focus. That is S for S, it is sub plural focus, and it is bilateral. Infracavicular focus. Okay. Post primary TB, that is the upper lobe, is involved, but in the case of the children, lower lobes are involved, and the post primary TB present with the Selman's focus and the Asman's focus. Asman's focus is bilateral infracavicular focus, and the Selman's is subplural focus. 
when we talk about the skin what is the most common presentation what is the most common primary skin lesion it is what lupus vulgaris and the second most that is the sacro scleroderma in case of the git it is the ileocecal junction that is most commonly involved apart from that in case of the bone it is what the spine that's the most commonly involved remember the skin that is the most common presentation is what lupus vulgaris and then the sacrophelloderma ileocecal junction in the case of the git it is the most common site is what ileocecal junction involvement of the spine that is a quartz spine now talking about the lab diagnosis talking about the lab diagnosis now first we do the sputum examination we take two sputum samples and what we take one we take on spot sample and another will we take early morning sample now first we have collected the sputum we have taken the two samples one is the early morning another is the on spot sample now what we will do now we will do the concentration and decontamination and how do we do the concentration and the decontamination we use what method petrops method in which we are using what we are using what and naoh and what we do we do we liquefy the sputum all right and we actually do the kill the other bacteria apart from the mycobacteria so that it will help us to in the interpretation so remember one is the petrops petrops method that is a question that is what method we use for the concentration of the sputum and two sputum samples are taken that is one is the on spot and another one is the early morning sample another one is what early morning sample now then we do the zn staining of the sample that we have taken now how do we do the uh, zn staining we have taken the sputum we have made the smear and then we stain with the carbol fusion we do the intermittent heating and then we add 20% of the h2so4 that is the decolorizer and blue we'll get what against the blue background we'll back we'll get what the pink red colored bacilli because they are resisting the decolorization because presence of what the mycolic acid so they will take the color of the primary stain other than this culture on the selective media that is the lg media this is what lowenstein jensen's media which is a selective media for what mycobacteria <coughs> it is what egg based media egg based selective media 
and what is the colony morphology of this mycobacterium tuberculin that is the rough buff rough buff and tough colonies why it is rough colonies because of the wrinkled appearance why it is buff colonies due to yellow brown color and why it is tough because it is adherent and it is difficult to separate the colony from the LJ media. And what is the color? That is color is green of the media. It is due to the presence of what? Malachite green. You get the presence of what? Malachite green. And what else methods we use? MTB, PCR methods for the detection of the <laughs> and gene export method line probe assay tb not nucleic acid amplification test mtb pcr with multi drug resistant detection Remember the media that we use is what LG media and it is an egg based media. We get rough, buff, and tough colonies for the lapra. Lapra, we get what the smooth colonies and it is green due to the presence of the malachite. Again, again, important question. These are the methods that we used for the detection of the MTB. <clears throat> One method we use is the IGRA. That is what interferon gamma release assay. That is IGRA, that is interferon gamma release assay method. And we do the, is a quantiferon TB gold assay. What happens is that ki jab bhi macrobiotic antigen, it will activate the T cell and activated T cell will release the gamma interferons. It will release the, the sensitized T lymphocyte will release the gamma interferons and we do the quantification. We check for the gamma interferons that is it is an interferon gamma based assay, interferon gamma released assay. <coughs> but the drawback is that, that it does not differentiate between active and latent TB. Okay, so interferon gamma release assay, although it's a very good method, but the drawback is that it doesn't differentiate. It different. It doesn't differentiate between the active and the latent TB. Next method that we use are the oramin. Rhodamin stain. Oramin rhodamin stain. This is fluorescent, fluorescent based staining and done in case of overload disease. Drawback is that key false positive rates are high. Again, important one, which one is generally asked that another stain that we use is oramin rotamin stain by using the fluorescent method in case of the high overload disease. But the drawback is that it, the false positive cases are high. Other than this, we do the tuberculin test or the Montex test. This is what we use 0.1 ml of. PPD that is what purified protein derivative. We use what 0.1 ml of PPD and where do we jet into the forearm flexor aspect. After three days, the results are interpreted by the induration. That is what to we check the hardness. By the induration, if then less than 5 mm, then it is what negative. 5 to 10 mm is what equivocal result, and more than 10 is what positive. 
So tubercle test or the Montex test we use by using the 0.1 ml of the PPD into the flexor aspect of the forearm. After three days, interpretation is done by the induration that is less than 5, 5 to 10 and more than 10. In the hardness, we only check for the diameter, not for the length. So it is also again a question that what do we see which is equal the length of the bread? We see the breadth, not the length. But the drawback is that we also have the false positive cases. False positive cases, the person has the recent BCG, recent vaccination of the BCG or in case of the atypical, in case of the atypical mycobacterium. Again, important question that we do have the false positive cases in case of the BCG, uh, recent BCG vaccination or the atypical mycobacterium. Similar like false positive, we also do have the false negative cases. False negative cases, if the person is already HIV positive, the person is having what? Meliary TB. Person is having what? Malignancy. And on the immunosuppression. Okay, so all these cases will give what? False negative, that is the HIV, meliary TB, malignancy and immunosuppression. And also we need to remember that tuberculin test is what delayed type of hypersensitivity that is type 4 hypersensitivity. When we learned about the hypersensitivity that is tuberculin test and the labrovin test they all are what the type 4 hypersensitivity. Now talking about the BCG vaccination that is what bacillus. Calmitic urine vaccine. That is derived by, derived from which strain? Danish 1331 strain of mycobacterium, which bovis. Alright, and it is given what? Intradermal. And what is the diluent that we used? Again, question. Diluent we use is normal saline. Distilled water we do not use. Efficacy is up to up to 80% efficacy. Alright, so false negative cases, all these are important. Where do we see the false negative cases and the strain that a BCG strain is that is the derived from Danish 131, 1331 from the uh, microbacterium bovis. It is intradermal and normal saline is used and efficacy is up to what 80% disease. 80%. Also, we do know that it is a notifiable disease. We have to notify once we come to know that or the, the case detection in the community. Now, serological routes are not used in India. Serological methods are not used like uh, the MTB cards and the MTB ELISA. They are not used in India. Now, coming next, a typical mycobacteria. The atypical mycobacteria, they are non-pathogenic unless, uh, unlike the mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is what pathogenic. Now, run yons classification, on the basis of the run yons classification, we have autochromogens. We have photochromogens that is they grow in light. And what are the examples of the photochromogens? That is the K mass, that is K for mycobacteria. Mycobacteria can say C M4 mycobacteria marinum. A4 mycobacteria asiaticum. S for mycobacteria females. So we are having the K mass that is using the light. K mass using the light. Alright. 
that is k mass is what k for cancer merinum uh, merium asiaticum and c mass they all are what photochromogens that is they uses the light to grow now next one after photochromogens we have what scotochromogens that is they will grow where in dark and that are what gss scotochromogens that is g stands for mycobacteria gardenus and s stands for mycobacteria scolzi That stands for mycobacteria. Sacroflation. So that is GSS, that is Gordon's Scolzi and the Sacroflation. They all are what? Scrotogromogens. Scrotogromogens. Now coming next, coming next is to the non chromogens. They are neither dependent on the light or on the dark for the synthesis and for the survival. That is, they are nor light nor dark dependent. And it consists of one is the MAC, that is a mycobacterial avium complex or mycobacterium intracellular, that is also known as a Betis bacillus. All right. And what else? Mycobacterium xenope. Mycobacterium ulcerans. Okay, non chromogens that is a mycobacterium avium complex, xenope, and the ulcerans. And the ulcerans. And last one is the rapid growers. In the rapid growers, we have the mycobacterium fly and mycobacterium smegmatis. So, scotochromogens that is requiring dark uh, GSS. That is the Scolzi and the Sacrophilatium and the Gordons and the non chromosomes that is the MAC, Xenope and the Ulcerans. The disease that are caused by them, what are the disease that are caused by them? First, Mycobacterium marinum, what does it cause? Swimming pool, granuloma, or fish tank granuloma. Next, we have important one that is buruli ulcer, that is by the mycobacterium ulcer, that is ulcerans. Other than this, we also have the post-injectional disease, but these are the important ones to remember that mycobacterium marinum causing the swimming pool disease or the fish tank granuloma and buruli ulcer that is caused by the ulcerans, that is caused by the ulcerans. Next, we have a typical mycobacterium, that is mycobacterium lapri. It is also known as the Hansen's disease. And they are not cultured. They are not cultured in pure plate. Therefore, therefore, it doesn't follow what? Pouch postulate. Alright, they grow, they grow where? In foot pad of mice and armadillo. We do the lapromin test that is again a prognostic test and not a diagnostic test. And we get two types of reaction that is one is the early lapromin reaction that is early Fernandes reaction and 
late lepromine reaction or late Mitsuda reaction. In the early Fernandez reaction, early lepromine reaction that is read after three days. And what we see, we measure the in duration. Late we measure after three weeks. And what we see, we measure the nodular diameter. Okay, so lepra that is causing the Hansen's disease and it doesn't follow the Koch postulate. MNT was an exception that doesn't follow the Koch postulate. And for lepra, Neisseria and the trypanoma pallidium. With the lepromine test for the prognosis, we get two types of reaction early of uh, fun and days on the late Mitsuda. Early is read right after three days and Mitsuda is read right after three weeks. And in the Mitsuda, what we see, we see for the nodular diameter. Now talking about the lepra reactions, there are also two types, one and type two reaction. Type one is what a downgrading reaction. And type one is what type four hypersensitivity reaction. What is the most common feature? It is what edema and what is the nerve that is involved? That is what ulnar nerve. Now type 2 that is erythema nodosum leprosum and it is type 3 type of hypersensitivity reaction. Now how to remember it? type 1, 1 this is 1, uske baad 4 ko bhi apan likte, that is the type 4 hypersensitivity and 2 ke baad 3. Now Obviously, we know that type 3 is what an immune complex mediated reaction. And we see what macules and nodules over skin. Now, lepra reaction can either occur spontaneously or can occur after the treatment. And it is a state of an emergency. And what we give in the emergency, that is the drug of the choice, is what? Glucocorticoids. Okay. The reaction is important. Type 1, that is 1 ke baad, it is a type 4 hypersensitivity. EDMI is the most common. And the ulnar nerve involvement, downgrading type of reaction. It is either monodosum leprosum. From the name itself, we get what macules and the nodules. And it is a complex, mediated immune complex. It can either occur spontaneously or after any treatment. Emergen after the treatment, emergency condition, we give what? Glucocorticoids. We give what? Glucocorticoids. Now for the lab diagnosis of lepra reaction, for the lab diagnosis of leprosy, now first we take the, we do the slit skin smear examination. And what is the most common site that is taken, the slit in is taken, that is, we, that is the bilateral ear lobes. Later, forehead. Mainly it is taken from where? Bilateral ear lobes. Then from the forehead, or from the chin or from the vertex or nasal mucosa and most importantly from where bilateral ear lobes then we do what again we do the z in staining from the same process that is adding the carbol fusion then intermittent heating then 5% of the h2so4 remember here we add 5% of the h2so4 as a decolorizer then add what methylene blue and we see what the blue back blue background with what with cigar shaped cigar shape or globby shape globby like Lepra, they are what seen. So we see what the we see the cigar cigar shape lepras against the blue background. Please remember we take the slit skin, uh, skin that is from the bilateral ear lobes and on the Z in staining we use what five percent of the H two SO four. For the treatment, for the treatment, for the possibility, 
to give out dap dapson and rifampicin and for the multivacillary to give out dapson plus clofazamine plus rifampicin for six months and one year now we'll talk about the next uh, acid fast bacillus will not test about the next acid fast that is nocardia and actinomyces very important they are what obligate arrow and they are what they are and arrows now, they are one person acid fast. Very important, they are what acid fast. They are non acid fast. Some species can be acid fast, but they are mainly non acid fast. They mainly cause what? Pulmonary infections, that is, pulmonary no cardiosis. And they cause what? They cause the actinomyces, actinomycosis. That is presenting with the sinus that has been swollen with granules that are what sulfur granules. And this is the triad that is present. Patient present with the sinus, with the edema that the edema and the swelling and the release of the granules that are sulfur granules. And these sulfur granules under microscope will show the sun ray appearance. All right, sun ray appearance. Other we have the actinomyces israeli that is responsible for causing what PID that is responsible for the PID and that is what acid fast in nature. Acid fast in nature. So very important that nocardia are what obligate arrow and they are acid fast they are acid fast and present with the pulmonary nocardiosis actinomyces the triad is a sinus with the swelling with the sulfur granules and granule cell, uh, granule appearance under microscope is sun ray appearance israel will cause the pid that is acid fast in nature Both nocardia and actinomyces combine to cause the actinomycetoma because nocardia also causes the mycetoma, no, pulmonary nocardiosis. And the drug of the choice can be remembered by the mnemonic SNAP that is sulfonamides that are given that are given for the nocardia and penicillin for the actinomyces for the actinomyces. Now coming to the next bacteria that is Listeria monocytogens. Listeria monocytogens that is again what a gram positive cocobacilli. And very important that is they show tumbling motility. They show tumbling motility and they are what peritrichus. They are peritrichus. In nature having what flagella all around so they are what they are gram positive coca bacilli with very important motility stumbling motility and culture is done where on the blood agar on the chocolate agar and on palcom agar test that we need to remember and 10 test is positive cam test is also positive and catalase test is also positive.
very important they show what motility tumbling type of motility they show what tumbling type of motility and culture and on the medias and important one they are antenna test they are cam test whereas we saw the cam test positive in the streptococcus a galacti so these tests are very important they are what cam test positive catalyst test positive and the antenna test positive what is the antenna test it is what it is the pulling the listeria culture into the eyes of rabbit into the eyes of rabbit and this will cause what kirato conjunctivitis kirato conjunctivitis that is what which are checking the pro invasiveness of the listeria coming to the disease that they are causing it is that they are causing they are what causing the granulomatosis in fent septica in the neonates and what else meningitis mainly in the children very important chorioamniotis in the pregnancy responsible for causing the pre rupture of the membrane what as sepsis very important that is they are responsible for causing the causing the choreomyotis and the prom and what is the drug of the choice that is given it is what ampicillin ampicillin and even they have the differential motility what is that meaning that is on 37 degree they are non motile and on 20 degree celsius they are what motile now what do we need to remember in the listeria we need to remember in the listeria that they shows the tumbling motility they are cam test positive catalase test positive and antenna test positive and the disease they causes the pre rupture of the membrane premature rupture of the membrane chorioamniotis and the ampicillin is the drug of the choice and the ampicillin is what the drug of the choice now we'll come to the gram negative we we'll first talk about the e coli we we'll first talk about the e coli now in the e coli i am b c that is indol methyl red box cross cure and the citrate is positive positive negative and negative in case of the clepsila they are what negative negative and positive positive so i am vc is what this is what in the case of the e coli this is in case of the clepsila disease by the e coli that they are responsible most common organism causing what uti diarrhea emphysematous pyelonephritis corneous gangrene primary bacterial peritonitis thromboid fish poisoning and positive histamine production 
ठीक है सो मेनली दे आर कॉजिंग द यूटीआई डायरिया एम्फाइसिमिटिस पैरोनेफ्राइटिस फॉर्नियस गैंग्रीन प्राइमरी बैक्टीरियल पेरिटोनाइटिस स्कॉम्बॉइड फिश पॉइजनिंग एंड द पॉजिटिव हिस्टामिन प्रोडक्शन when we talk about the uti by the e coli is the f fimbri attached to what attached to the uro epithelial cells and 10 to power 5 e coli per ml will cause a significant uti because a significant bacteria urea and what is the criteria for the diagnosis of the uti more than 100 colonies into 10 to the power 3 or more than 10 colonies to 10 to the power 8 colonies are more than 10 to the power colonies into 10 to the power 3 we have the additional positive symptoms and signs of uti that is if it is more than 10 to the power per ml then the positive uti uti case is 10 to the power 4 ml with sign and symptoms of uti all right and what are the diarrhea causing e coli all the variants of the e coli that is enteropathogenic e coli entero invasive e coli entero toxicogenic e coli entero hemorrhagic e coli entero aggregative e coli they all will cause the diarrhea all will cause what the diarrhea First coming to the enteropathogenic E. coli. It is causing what mainly in the children. It is mainly causing the diarrhea in the children, and it attached to what it attached to the enterocytes and cause the. e facing lesions it is it is responsible for causing bacterial infantile diarrhea diarrhea and it damage what the tight junctions tight junctions of intestinal mucosa this is enteropathogenic e coli that is enteropathogenic e coli in the children causing the bacterial infantile diarrhea now next is what entero invasive e coli that is what resembling this is what this is a typical e coli and it resembles what it resembles the shigella and just like shigella the serine test is what serine test is what positive the serine test is what positive and just like shigella it is what non lactose fermenter non lactose e coli is lactose fermenter but entero invasive e coli just like shigella is what non lactose fermenter and positive serine's test that is to check for the pro invasiveness by inoculating the toxin into the eye causing the keratin conjunctivitis to the rabbit and we did for the we did for e entero invasive e coli and for the shigella So remember that the bacterial infantile diarrhea is mainly caused by the EPC and it damages the tight junction. EIEC responsible uh, 
it is similar to that of the atypical it is similar to that of shigella and it is atypical e coli now coming to the next that is Enterotoxigenic E. coli, that is what enterotoxigenic E. coli, and that is T4T that is causing responsible for causing what the traveler's diarrhea. Responsible for causing what traveler's diarrhea with infective dose of more than 10 is to power 9 bacilli, and it is what it is food and water bond. Obviously, the person who are traveling to other places, mainly they get to other countries, they are mainly the travelers, diarrhea, mainly people coming from the developed to developing countries, food and waterborne diseases. And it is due to the toxin that is what toxin that is what heat labile, labile toxin and what is table toxin. The heat labile toxin that is responsible for increasing the can and it is for the cgmp mediated that is person will present which leads to the pumping out of pumping out of ions into the intestinal lumen leading to what leading to what diarrhea and the abdominal cramps diarrhea and the abdominal cramps very important that it is t4t responsible for causing what the causing the Travelers, diarrhea that is food and water borne, and the toxins that is violence factors are the toxin and the fimbri and the stable and the labile toxin that is CAMP and CGMP mediated. CAMP and CGMP mediated. You can easily remember this that CAMP is labile. In air, okay, air that is the camp is labile in air, that is the camp is labile in A for A is that air, so labile in air. Now moving next is what anthrohemorrhagic anthrohemorrhagic E. coli. And through hemorrhagic E. coli. From the name itself, that it is what it is the commonest cause of diarrhea associated hemolytic syndrome. That is causing what the diarrhea associated hemolytic syndrome and by the consumption of the contaminated cooked food or burger or water and person to person transmission is what possible. Again, important question that person to person transmission is possible and by the consumption of the cooked food or the history of the consumption of the burger or the water and it will cause what hemolytic uremic syndrome that is what HUS. HUS. And the main variant that is O157H7. O is what a somatic antigen and H is what flagellar antigen. Causing what? HUS. Causing what? Hemolytic uremic syndrome. And the media to differentiate is what? The SMAC media, the orbitals, McConkie. And they will show what? The pale colored colonies because they will not ferment the sorbitol unlike the other, other variants that will show the pink colored colonies on the SMAC media.
now the toxins are toxin is what virotoxin virotoxin which is similar to that of the shiga toxin which is similar to that of the shiga toxin so important this is important one please remember ki antro hemorrhagic e coli that is uh, that is causing what that is causing the hemolytic syndrome with the diarrhea after the consumption of the contaminated food water and the burger person to person transmission is seen and uh, o157 h7 that is mainly responsible for causing what hus and smac is the media because they doesn't form in the sorbitol toxin is what viro toxin that is shiga like toxin viro toxin 1 and 2 that is what shiga like toxin the last one is what antro aggregatory antro aggregatory e coli antro aggregative e coli and they are responsible for the persistent diarrhea they are responsible for the persistent or the chronic diarrhea cases it can also cause travelers diarrhea and has special association with malnourishment cases mal nourishment cases and the name antro aggregative is due to the stacked appearance stacked brick appearance on have two l lines okay so antro aggregative e coli that is responsible for causing what the persistent or the chronic diarrhea and it can also cause the Travelers diarrhea uh, mainly in the malnourished people and shows the typical appearance of the stacked brick appearance on the ela hep to lines. So that is about E A E C E A E C. Next is the neonatal meningitis. what is the most common agent for causing the neonatal meningitis is what e coli e coli associated with k1 antigen second most is what klebsiella and what is the third most that is what that is the group b streptococcus that is streptococcus a galacti all right streptococcus a galacti so eac causing persistent or the chronic diarrhea can also cause the travelers diarrhea association with the malnourished people stacked brick appearance and causes the meningitis after that klebsiella and the streptococcus group b a galacti group b a galacti all does we study the disease that is caused by the e coli that is what thromboid thromboid fish poisoning from poid fish poisoning that is due to the histamine production and caused caused by the e coli and marginella both causing what the from poid fish poisoning that is caused by the e coli and the marginella and it belongs to a family of proteus and it belongs to a family of protea that is proteus is also belonging to the same family so scromboid fish poisoning that is caused by e coli and the klebsiella both e coli and the marginal are both now we'll talk about the next important that is the klebsiella we already see imvc that is last two are positive and it is a gram negative bacillus that is important yes some bacteria have killer and mean capsule k stands for capsule 
so capsulated bacteria and they are non motile they are non motile that are what lactose fermenters we know the mnemonic for the non lactose fermenters that is what ships that is shigella salmona yarsenia and the proteas and they therefore they are what lactose fermenters and urease positive that is you remember the mnemonic for the urease that is the punch case and what is the k i stands for it is what clapsilla it is what clapsilla Now, urea is positive organism. Urea is positive organism. Proteus. Urea plasma. Nocardia. C4 cryptococcus. H4 H pylori. Clepsilla K4 clepsilla. And as for staph aureus. Alright, that is a punch case. That is a proteus, ureoplasma, nucardia, and the cryptococcus, H. pylori, clepsilla, and the staph aureus. And the staph aureus, that is what punch case. Next, we'll talk about the clepsilla. That is a clepsilla main disease. That is the clepsilla pneumonia. Clepsilla pneumonia, that is what? Fried landos. That is also known as the fried landos bacilli. Known as the fried, land, fried landos bacilli. And it is a case of the typical pneumonia. And causing what? Red current. Red current jelly sputum and bulging fissure sign on chest x ray. Okay, so clapsilla pneumonia very important. They cause the typical pneumonia. What is the other name? That is a fried landos bacillus and they cause the red current jelly sputum with the bulging fissure appearance on the chest x-ray bulging fissure appearance on what the chest x-ray next is what lapsilla <coughs> pozana <coughs> that is causing what atrophic atrophic rhinitis <coughs> also known as what ruminos with foul smell and treatment is what sodium bicarbonate douche and modified Young's operation. All right, modified Young's operation. So, Clebsilla organ that is causing what atrophic rhinitis, causing what the atrophic rhinitis, and that is also known as a roomy nose and the foul smelling. A patient present foul smell with sodium carbonate douche is given for the treatment and modified Young operation. Next is Clebsilla. Rhino Cleromatis that is causing what? Rhino Scleroma, which is what? Udinos. And we have typical cells that is what? Miculate cells. And what is? Duzel bodies. Okay? Duzel bodies. So, oisena that is causing very important atrophic rhinitis or the woody nose with the foul smell and clapsular rhinosperomitis that is causing what the woody nose with miculate cell and the ruzel bodies and the ruzel bodies. Now, coming to the New Delhi 
metallopatellectomies that is and dm1 also known as what super pug this is again a clepsilla pneumonia strain all right and is resistant to most of the drugs that is named as the metallo back uh, metallo batelectomies and ndm1 now we'll talk next we are done with the clepsilla the clepsilla the wet short the roomy nose and the woody nose and the clepsian pneumonia and the rhinosclerometis with the miculite cell and the ruzel bodies and the biochemical test that is imvc that is vc is positive now next that is what we'll talk about the protease easy one that is we'll talk about protease that is also a gram negative bacillus and show very important motility that is what swarming motility and we can inhibit the swarming by increasing the concentration of the agar up to 6% or by the mekonki agar or by the cled media or by the addition of the iron by the addition of the ferrous we can inhibit the swarming motility or by addition of what the boric acid or chloral hydrate we can inhibit the swarming motility culture when we talk about the culture they can be easily be cultured on the mekonki agar and they will produce the non lactose fermenters because the mnemonic that is non lactose fermenters that is what ships p stands for protease and ppa test that is positive that is what phenyl pyruvic acid agar test they will produce what fishy smell with seminal smell that will produced on both the media we it be mekonki agar or the ppa test so protease they are what gram negative bacillus with very important motility swarming motility that can be inhibited by increasing the concentration of the agar and mekonki are increasing the the yeah. mekonki media cled media on the mekonki they are non lactose fermenters and the ppa media that's phenyl pyruvic acid agar media and they show very important fishy smell or the seminal smell on both the medias on both the medias now one is what dyens phenomenon very important when jab apan do strain ko grow karte hain same media pe like a dyens uh, like proteus vulgaris and the proteus mirabilis so they both will have the line of the separation between their colony formation this is what the dyens one is the dyens phenomena and there is a dyens test that we do for the mycoplasma and dyens phenomena that we see in the protease that we see in the protease that is this is what this is a line of separation between two different strains of two different strains of protease okay that is between two different strains of protease now talking about the protease antigen interaction ठीक है वे वर वी आई थॉट आई हैव स्टॉप द लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग सो प्रोटीएस वे वे प्रोटीएस एंटीजेनिक इंटरेक्शन विद ओ एक्स नाइनटीन टू एंड के वी ऑलरेडी नो 
where we see this in the wickets here wickets here family members we see the cross react cross reactivity the ox 192 and k of the proteas with the wickets here cross reactivity that is for the we do for the wheel phallic Felix reaction to check for the heterophile antibodies to check for the heterophile antibodies that is heterophile agglutination test the antibodies that has been formed against the rickets yeah they will cross react with the ox 192 k antigen of the proteus because of the similarity of the antigens between the proteus and the rickets yeah so this is what what is the name of the test it is wheel phallic test and oxk oxk will be highly positive for the scrub typhus for the scrub typhus that is oxk oxk will be highly positive for the scrub typhus okay and what do we use ox19 2 and k you can easily write scrub typhus that is k k is highly positive for the scrub typhus typhus Proteus is also responsible for causing what important one that is chronic UTI that what type of stones that is the true white or the triple phosphate or the staghorn calculus okay staghorn calculus so OX19 to and K cross reacts with the Rickets here antigens and antibodies and gives the wheel phallus positive test, which is heterophile agglutination test and OXK that is positive where in the scrub K4K. Chronic UTI presenting with the true white or triple phosphate or the stag on calculus or the stag on calculus. Next, we'll talk about cell monella. Cell monella. So, cell monella, they are also what gram negative bacilli. They are also what gram negative bacilli and they are motile. But we also have the exceptions that are non motile. Usme apne kya inge? That is a cell molena gallinera and cell molena flora. Okay, rum rum wale non motile. Okay, now. We can classify the cell molina, the typhi and the paratyphi and non-cell molina, uh, this non-typhoidal cell molina on the basis of Kaufman and white scheme classification. Kaufman and white scheme classification. We classified what the gram of uh, salmonella and they are mostly motile, but they are mostly motile by peritrichus flagella. But we also have the non motile salmonella that is the gallinorum and the rum rum that is the gallinorum and the fulorum. Now we'll talk first about the salmonella typhi. It causes what very important typhoid fever. Typhoid fever, that is enteric fever, caused by what? Typhi. Not only typhi causes the enteric fever, it is paratyphi as well. Paratyphi A, B, and C can also cause the enteric fever. And it is transmitted by the pico oral root transmission. And what type of fever do we see? It is what? Step ladder type of fever. And what type of spots we see? They are what? Rose pattern spots. They are rose spots. And what type of ulcer? That is T typhoid. We see what? L that is longitudinal type of ulcer. And what is very important? P soup. P soup diarrhea. Pain. All are important that they are motile, but we also have the non motile that is cell molina gallilorum, cell molina pilorum. 
on the basis of the Kaufman and the white scheme classification. First, we read about the cell molnar typhi that is causing a typhoid fever. Apart from the entry in the cell typhi, we also have the paratyphi A, B, and C that is causing the typhoidal enteric fever. Transmission route, FECO all the route, strep, ladder fever, and it is what is incubation period is about 10 to 14 days, raw spots, longitudinal type of ulcers, and the pea soup diarrhea seen. Pea soup diarrhea is seen. Pea soup diarrhea is seen. Talking about the lab diagnosis, which is by the mnemonic, that is what bas soup. That is B A S U Basu. That in the first week we do the blood culture. In the second week we do the agglutination test. That is the vital we do for the agglutination test. Tool culture. The third and the urine culture. In the first week, in the second week, in the third week, and in the fourth week. That is by the mnemonic, that is what? Basu. <coughs> talking about the blood culture, talking about the blood culture, it is overall the best, overall the best, and we see for the, that is a culture fluid. In the first week, the main criteria is to see for the blood culture we see for the cell molina and it is positive up to 80 to 85 percent. By the third week, it is positive up to 60 percent, up to sensitivity reduces up to the 60 percent by third week. <laughs> We add, we add SPS, that is what sodium polyanethyl sulfonamides. This is to reduce the effect of the antibiotic that we are giving to the patient. We add what SPS, that is what sodium polyanethyl sulfo sulfonates to reduce the effects of the antibiotic. Remember, we do the BASU for the laboratory diagnosis. In the first week, what we do? The blood culture. Now, next we do, next we do the Vidal test. It is neither sensitive nor specific. Okay. is highly sensitive sorry it is highly sensitive but it is not specific it is poorly specific and highly sensitive that we do in the second week and it is also giving the false positive results false positive results in case of what in case of disease like infectious mononucleosis in cases of the disease like malaria and autoimmune diseases like SLE. Okay, so with our test, although it is highly sensitive, but the specificity is very less, even in the case of the IM malaria and the SLE, the Vidal is positive. The Vidal is positive, and we check the antibody titer against against O antigen and H antigen. Against O antigen, if it is positive, more than 100 and more than 200 in case of the positive cases in case of the H antigen. Now, H antigen or the flagellar antigen is highly specific and is what more immunogenic. All right. So, remember, remember that false positive results are seen where in the infectious immunonucleus SLE and they are highly sensitive, not specific. We check for the antibodies against antigen O and H more than 100 and 200 and H antigen is highly specific and is more immunogenic, more immunogenic. Paired testing is done. Paired testing is done after two weeks, the two weeks or initial testing. 
and in the second test second test we check for the four fold rise in the title and if it is present then case is positive for that of the typhoid so peer testing is generally done now first testing after doing the first testing the second test is done to check for the four fold rise in the title Now the types of the Vidal, we have one is what slide Vidal test and the tube Vidal. Now in the tube Vidal, the serial dilutions are done with, are done with normal saline and therefore the prozone phenomena is avoided. That is prozone matlab antibody excess is avoided. Next we do in the third week is what basu that is a stool and the urine culture. We use the enrichment media. What is the enrichment media for the cell molena? It is what? Selenite. Selenite F growth. And we remember that selenite is selenium. That selenium is what inhibiting the other coliforms in the stool and the urine and actually increasing the growth of what the helping in the growth of what the cell molena. Other than this, the selective media for the cell molena that is DCA deoxy folate agar. What is selective media? XLD. That is what xylose lysine deoxycholate. What is SS agar? That is cell molena shigella agar. And what is HE? That is what actin enteric agar. All these are important. All the name are important. Type of test we mainly do the tube vidal test. We do the serial dilution to prevent what the prozone phenomena. Enrichment media very important that is a selenite F growth having the selenium that is selective for the growth and uh, inhibiting the growth of other other uh, this coliforms. Selective media DCA, XLD, SSA or HE or HE. Now. Now all the meters that we have seen, the selective meter DCA, XLD, SSA, HE, they are also used for, they are also used for the Shigella. Now, but exception is that one is the Wilson Blair media. Wilson Blair media that is we use specifically for what? Cell monena. All right, and we see what see the jet black colonies. Jet black colonies. What is the transport media? Transport media. If you remember, one is the carry player. Carry player media. And what else media? Buffered saline. Glycerol media. Okay. What is the transport media we are using? We remembered whenever we need to carry the stools, we use the carry Blair media for the cellular shigella and the vibrio. And buffered saline glycerol media as the transport media for what? Cell molena and shigella for both. We are using the carry Blair and the buffered saline glycerol media. And on the Wilson Blair, we see what the jet black colonies not talking about the antigen the vi antigen the vi antigen is covering the o antigen and the typing can be done for the epidemiological markers for the epidemiological study please remember the transport media is a carry player media for the vibro cholera salmonella shigella and the buffered glycerol saline media on the wilson and the blair media they show what the jet black colonies they show what the jet black colonies and what is the transport media carry player and the buffered glycerol saline media
talking something about talking something about non cell molena typhi that is what cell molena typhi murium all right cell molena typhi murium is responsible for causing the gastroenteritis gastroenteritis person consuming the raw milk the patient will present with the gastroenteritis and it is mainly by the cell molena typhi murium and it is after the consumption of consumption of poultry products poultry products because it can enter the intact egg shell what is the drug of choice that we give is what third generation cephalosporin for the typhoid and the and the non salmon typhus third generation cephalosporin third generation cephalosporin now we'll read the last bacteria of today's session that is what pseudomonas 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 is also gram negative bacilli and it is also catalase positive and oxidase negative now the gram negative bacilli all are uh, all are catalase positive except what except we read about the shigella dysentery that is what catalase negative that is catalase negative now what is the virulence factor for the pseudomonas one is that it is capsulated and capsule is what polysaccharide in nature only in case of the bacillus only in the case of the bacillus it was what polypeptide in nature so that is yes some bacteria killer and the main capsule so that one was the pseudomonas that is capsulated and alginic acid and what else the pigments that are produced the pigments that are produced that is biocyanin biocyanin biorubin and what is Bio melanin. Bio that is sanit khane ke baad insaan ke usse blue par jata pale blue that is the blue pigment. Rubin R four R red pigment. Bacha wa kya hai? Brown black. Melanin is obviously black. And what is bio viridin? That is why that is the yellow. Yellow green pigment. We want yellow green pigment. so pigment color are very important they are gram negative bacilli that are catalase positive capsulated alginic acid and pigments cyanin cyanide khane ke baad blue pad raha insaan rubin r4 r red melanin is black and verdin is what yellow green is what yellow green and what is the selective media what is the selective media selective media is what cetrimide media what cetrimide media is what the selective media is what the selective media now we need to come to the diseases diseases of the pseudomonas that is what shanghai shanghai fever what else malignant malignant otitis external what is gangrenosum thyma gangrenosum what is ventilator ventilator associated pneumonia what is burn wound burn wound infections burn wound infections what is meningitis what is uti 
very important causes the shanghai fever malignant otitis externa and this year the burn wound infection that is mainly caused by the pseudomonas pseudomonas and they are what they are oxidase positive and the catalase positive oxidase positive therefore we see the see the purple color change and that was the question that was asked in the oxidase state, uh, test the color change to that of the purple and the patient has the history of the burn so burn wound infection burn wound ex, um, infection and what is the shanghai fever now what are anti pseudomonas anti pseudomonas drugs that are what polymyxin b and what is colistin Holistic. ठीक है सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर पॉलीमाइक्सिन बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉलीमाइक्सिन बी पी फोर पी वी आर गिविंग फॉर वॉट पी फोर बी वी आर गिविंग फॉर वॉट सूडोमोनास इन द सूडोमोनास वन वी नीड रिमेम्बर दे आर कैटेलिस पॉजिटिव ऑक्सीडेज पॉजिटिव एंड द कलर पिगमेंट पायसानिन पाइनोरोबिन पाइनोविरेडिन एंड द पायोमिलानिन एंड वॉट इज द ड्रग दैट इज द ड्रग इज गिवन विथ पी फोर पी दैट इज द पायो एनिमल डिजीज एंड मेनली non motile next is burkholderia pseudo meli that is causing what burkholderia meli is causing the glandular disease and the pseudo meli is causing what melio dosis melio dosis which is also known as witmore's witmore's disease or witmore's bacilli or wit Nam, bomb disease, and they are what bipolar stained. Okay, Burkholderia meli causing the glandulars, pseudomeli causing the melio dosis, or the Wittmore's or Wit Nam Wit Nam bomb disease. Next is what S C S C T N O vector. That is what an I C U isolate. and it is what multi drug resistance and oxidase negative please remember these three points that are oxidase positive okay uh so thank you so much for the patients on that to on the today's day that to on the diwali and very very happy diwali i can hear a so much of noise in my house because so many guests have arrived right now and i'm jealous of the people who are enjoying the time and i'm sitting and taking the class but it's okay so even though i also have duty as well so i'm jealous of all the people around who are having fun and uh, who are having the day off or the off for the diwali but i will be doing the duty at the hospital so that is all right we are used to it now this is a second continuous diwali after the residency i am working on the working and i am not having the off on any of the holidays be it rakhi be it diwali be it holi be it new year since uh, two years this is continuously happening i hope that juniors arrive soon and next year i will be able to celebrate diwali with my family <laughs> okay so thank you for today's session and please do use my code that is muskan 10 to get 10% of the discount and only one more session will be left of bacteriology we'll cover the rest of the vibrio and the rickettsia uh, and the rest of rest of the important uh, left bacteria so thank you and uh, happy diwali please do use my mus code that is muskan 10 to get 10% of the discount and the people who are preparing for the iict a very good luck and best of luck uh, please do share uh, like share and the subscribe and use my code that is muskan 10 uh,
I hope that uh, people uh, who are working very hard for the INSIT will be working and they will perform very well in the examination. We will share some strategy videos for the INICT as well, how to do the question and how to attend. A uh, few have been already done on the Unacademy channel and do follow me on the Unacademy app as well as Unacademy YouTube and press the bell icon so that you do not miss any of the classes that we are going to take for any of the topic further and the further examination preparation. Thank you. So uh, enjoy today and have fun with your families as well as do study to keep because the examination of the uh, aims uh, this INICT is over the head and we cannot miss out uh, to study because something is better than nothing. Do study a little bit so that you, your internal soul will get satisfaction. Otherwise, when we completely don't study on the day, uh, day preparation, I remember uh, inner soul says, ki, okay, we have even studied a bit, a bit even. So just study one, two hours so that you get satisfied, okay, that I have done some work today. All right. So thank you. Take care and bye-bye.